Um, today we're going to be talking about how to become your husband's best friend. Ooh. Yeah. That means all I got to do, I can watch the football game. You don't need me here. Can't watch the football game? No, baby. Oh. <laughs> that actually is one of the ways. But you're already my best friend, so you'll forgive me for the day, right, honey? Yeah. Please. Okay. I know, baby. I know. I, I appreciate your sacrifice. Okay, sweetie, you go ahead and let's pray. Lord God, we thank you one more time again for the opportunity to use this platform, Father God, to help our family and our friends learn how we can become better husbands and wives to each other. Please, dear God, please, we pray that what we say here today is pleasing to you and will bless you to help us to be blessed by you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. I think I need to defer... Uh, or explain first is um, today we're talking about how to become your husband's best friend. Next week we're going to talk about how to become your wife's keeping. Well, you know. Wait a minute. Look how big that book is. <laughs> Look how big that book is compared to this pamphlet. <laughs> <laughs> you mean, that means we got to do all that. We can't keep y'all. <laughs> Oh no! That's right. It, it's it's it, a lot of it's a know, lot of work having a woman. It okay. is a lot of work, and and, and and that's one of the things we're not gonna talk about that right now, baby. But the, the, it oh is my a lot. Gosh, it, look at that! I know. <laughs> this is forty. This is fifty-seven pages. That's not okay. Yeah, not quite sixty pages, anyway. You know, it, it doesn't take we, girls. We pretty much figured out what you know what to do become their best friend i just want to e reiterate some of it okay 239 pages 39 pages to 239 okay <laughs> that's all right okay all righty first um but i understand why that book is so thick though because y'all never know what you want you never know what you want that, that's not one of the ways to become my best friend by doing that. Okay. Yes. We'll see you next week. We'll see next week. We'll see you next week. We'll see, okay. we'll see next week. Um, one of the things I was reading in that book was talking about um, us not, okay. us okay. trying to remember. Um, one of the things we have to do is remember what attracted our husband to us. And that's what we have to dig back in and remember that. Try to recall that. It, what we didn't I don't know of anybody who nagged their husband before they got married. <laughs> Nobody's gonna do that. None of y'all would be married. Okay? <laughs> no, I ain't nagged nobody. <laughs> Whatever he did was cute. We were satisfied with everything he did. Every time he opened his mouth, we were just paying so much attention to him and listening to every word he had to say. Like his lips was dripping gold. Mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. Couldn't get enough of his voice. Go home and listen to him for hours on the telephone. All that. Everything, every joke he told, even if it wasn't funny, we laughed anyhow. We just got our belly just ache. Our, and we just smiling. And, and our jaws got hurt, was, was sore after he left because we just smiling just the whole time. Just, oh, I just can't. Oh, I just, you know, all that. So we have to dig back and remember how what attracted our husband to I'll us to you. okay you know, um what makes me i am your best friend right yes you are okay without a doubt without a doubt what no. makes me your best friend whatever i need i know if you got it i got it okay no question asked if i am in need of something and you and you can fulfill that need i got it what are some of your needs jeez some of my needs. Oh Remember, my the pastor's watching. I have had needs that go beyond what normal people need, okay? And you have supplied them. Okay, like I got friends like John and Jim, okay? And Rich, okay? Dwight. They, you know, they are there to help me. If, I, if I'm working on something, if I had an issue with a car or something like that, those guys would be right there, okay? Without a doubt. But if I come in here and I get sick and I can't, I can't bo do bodily functions. I need some help doing bodily functions. I better not call them. <laughs> I'll still be sitting there. Okay. <laughs> okay. I got a call on you, baby. Okay. So only your best friend would do that? Only my best friend would do that. Okay. okay. All right. All right. Um, what makes your best friend, you, you, somewhere you can share 
intimate. Um, um, and intimacy doesn't always mean, you know, making cookies and, and biscuits. You know, sometimes intimacy is just spending time together, you know, just, just you know, just time. With, and it ain't no football on. We even just, if it is on. If it, even, <laughs> even if it is on and you're sitting, you know, or I'm sitting close to you in the truck and you rubbing my knee. Well, you can't even do that anymore. Bless your mm-hmm. heart. Because, you know, who's driving if you rubbing my knee, right? Right. Okay. But, you know, just, just sitting and just staring. I thought, I thought it was something funny to say, but I can't say it yet. Oh, you never mind. That's yeah. right. Don't say that. Okay. <laughs> um, my goal is to become your closest companion. And, and you are. And, and, and to bond with you. And many times the way we bond with our spouse, with our husband, is through tragedy. If you are married long enough, more than just a, a few minutes, sooner or later, you're going to have tragedy in your lives. And one of the ways you bond and become a very close companion to your husband is to to um, address that tragedy together. With, and ours came from so many illnesses. I had illnesses. Hamp had illnesses. But um, you know what's really funny about this? these illnesses? I, I never thought of them as um tragedies okay i I never thought you know we're still going through we're still praying we're still asking god for guidance and i never thought of them as tragedies okay what would be tragic is if we didn't go through them together that Mm -hmm. would be tragic Mm -hmm. to me that Mm -hmm. would be tragic Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. yeah i think so too if if you have um i know i have uh friends who have faced really, really um, uh, hard health problems, you know, with cancer, um, kidney failure, uh, even um, a, a COVID where they, they nearly lost their spouse. And uh, because their spouse was there to support them it, and that they fought this, that's a common enemy, then um, that helps bond you to your spouse. For example, Eve had the perfect, Eve, Adam and Eve had the perfect chance to become each other's best friend. They were not best friends. If you look at them, they was, they was fighting from day one. And, and their common enemy was Satan. They could have bonded so tightly to the point where Satan would not have been able to influence either one of them. And they missed that opportunity. Eve gave in. She wanted to do her own thing. She didn't want to listen to her husband. She, he, he don't know what he's talking about. I'm going to have me a bite of that apple. And then when she did that, he realized that she should have bitten that apple. Then she wanted to make sure he bit it so that he'd be in just as much trouble as she was. Well, and, you got to remember when, when the order was given, don't eat anything of the, of the midst of the garden. Uh, don't eat that tree. Don't eat any fruit off of that tree. I think God told him, but he didn't tell her. Oh, but she, but she should have listened to her husband, and she didn't. Yeah. She didn't. Yeah. She was not listening. Well, isn't that? Um, uh oh. Mhm. <laughs> I, I don't even have to say it. <laughs> I don't even, especially with you. Okay. <laughs> I don't have to say it. Well, why can't I eat that apple? <laughs> I don't even have to say it. But if you had said that we shouldn't eat the apple, I'm I'm a submissive wife. You said that. Didn't you say that the last time? You said that. So I wouldn't have I wouldn't have had that apple. Sure, I you would have sucked that apple up. <laughs> if you get you would have sucked that apple up. Oh Lord. Up. Oh um uh, when tragedy strikes it at your door, you can strengthen your marriage by dealing with it as a team. All the time when I, I we found out I couldn't have children, and um, when uh, you had the uh, accidents, and I w- was able to endear myself to you by being at your side as much as I was. Uh, you're in the hospital 30 days each time, and I and I didn't leave your side, and I know that. But I wasn't thinking about, gee, if I could do this, I'm gonna be Hans' best friend. I w- that was not on my mind. You don't know what a comfort that was to wake up and see you, okay? That was a comfort. Um, I, I love to see you come. I hated to see you go. Okay. One room when, you were in, you could see me coming down the parkway. Remember that? You don't remember that? No. Yeah, I would call no, you. That had to be a PG. It was a PG hospital, okay. and yeah. you were you were on uh, yeah. the top okay. floor or something up there, and I could call Hamp 
and tell him what I was passing. He would know. He would be able to look out the window. He didn't go to the window. He could see it from his bed, and he could see me coming down the park. You were in. You were already out of ICU at that time, yeah, yeah. and you could see me coming down the parkway. Yeah, yep. But I I knew, and that when I, you were a PG, that was the first accident. Lord have mercy. Yeah. Uh, I couldn't stay. Um, uh, when did I just stay with you? Mm, I, I don't remember. I'm so far out of it. I didn't remember. Yeah. I know I stayed with you when we were at Washington Hospital Center, but I don't think, I'm not sure yeah. if I stayed with you at PG. I think oh. I did. Yes, I did. I did. Yeah, I did. But I was going home every now and then. I would go home to get clean clothes, take a bath, you know, something like that. So, yeah. Yeah, I did. But that's one of the ways we can do that. Never, um, one of the things you can do is uh, let your husband, your husband know that you value his opinion in your marriage, in the way you take care of the kids, things like that. I remember one time, story time, Hamp, um, little Hamp, I don't know what he was doing, but evidently Big Hamp was um, not pleased with the way I was raising our son. I was doing, I don't even remember what it was. Maybe you remember. And he said, one time he said, give me my son. I want my son. You remember that conversation? Mm -hmm. You did? You want to explain it? I didn't want you to influence your feminine way <laughs> on him. Okay, don't mess with my boy. You, you got the little girl. You take care of that. Okay? <laughs> don't mess with. We're going fishing. We're going hunting. Whatever we're going to do. Okay? You wanted your son. Yes. And I said, I want my baby, you know. And I had him. I taught boy. my baby how. My, he made the perfect husband. He sits down when he goes potty. He oh. still sits down when he goes potty. Well, so do you. But that's what I say that. That's all I want. I just want a clean bathroom. That's all. But he, he he told me I want my son. He said, Give me my son. And it's, I said, It's more fun when you aim on the wall. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's a lot. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, one of the ways that um, that I also have continued to be uh, Hamp's um, best friend, his closest companion, is as his caregiver. And I do not um, wish the life of a caregiver on any spouse but it has been such a blessing to us for me to be Hamp's caregiver I have been so blessed it is a hard job but I wouldn't trade a second of it and um and he is so appreciative mm -hmm. and I saw that it has been I think it's been easy for me to endear myself to Hampton because he needs me and ladies don't we love that we love to be needed don't we love to be needed and you know and and you got somebody he needs me and he'll call my name I'm right there I'm I'm on it yes I'm right here honey I'm here need anything can I do this for you yeah but sometimes he'll try he'll I can see him trying to do stuff on his own and you know because he doesn't want to bother me I keep telling him it's not a bother and I'll do that I just gives me another chance to endear myself to him and um, I was reading something and was saying that one of the reasons that husbands will stray is because um, they don't see um, a, a, the lack of variety in what you're doing for them, that you have not learned how um, to meet their needs. Now, men have more than just one need. If you ask him what's his need, his main need, don't even ask him. But in, in, he, has more than, <laughs> he has more than one need. And sometimes the men don't even know their needs. Hence, the big book. Some <laughs> <laughs> they just don't know. So he must have asked the man, "What do you need? What do you What do you want from you?" No, I don't know. Whatever meat, she does, meat, <laughs> meat potatoes. potatoes and look and, and, and some biscuits with some butter on the side. Yeah. <laughs> so, that's okay. Well, that's why you, you got this. Do, okay. <laughs> <laughs> and so we we are left because um because the. Most of the time, we have to read their minds. We have to be very intuitive to be, figure out to, uh, what men want. That is not a cure for everything, Hampton. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a cure for everything. Thank you very much. Anyhow, <laughs> um, some of the things that uh, we, we have to add and to our or keep in our marriage is humor you know how you we laugh at each other's jokes and I didn't have, to be able to keep the humor in your marriage uh smiling like what's the last time you smiled at your husband when you smile at him just smile at him you know what's the last time i smiled at you him oh, right now 
Yes, all the time. I, I'm, I smile all the time. I, I told you, know, you that's what that's what attracted me. I saw your smile. Yeah, that's oh, that's the least I can do is, is smile at him. Oh, you know, you know. Sometimes he makes me so mad. All I can do is smile at him. Hey, like I said yeah. earlier, I found out you were the new girl in the neighborhood. I was so happy. <laughs> But I knew it. New girl in the neighborhood, she ain't related to me. Okay. And she smiles. And she smiles. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, becoming best friends is a process. Just like becoming a soulmate is it a process. Is work. You got to work at it, guys. You have, you have to, to learn to compensate when you are confronted with da daily, not your air and air and air, daily with the faults and weaknesses of your mate. Yeah. All the time. All the time. Every day. Yes, ma'am. There's something. Mm -hmm. That a weakness in in your in your spouse, not me, because I'm too busy being perfect. <laughs> <laughs> Move away from you, you get struck by lightning. <laughs> okay. Uh, uh, but, no. but many times, if we just ask our spouse, our husband, how they like to be comfort comforted. For example, if you went to the bank account, now, this say it's not my fault mm -hmm. this time. Okay, but let's say you went to our bank account. And there was absolutely no money in there, and it's the middle of the month, and all the checks have already come in. How can I comfort you? Oh, stand out on Fifth and K. <laughs> <laughs> stand in that corner. <laughs> I no. would think anybody gonna pay anything no, for a no, seventy-five year old hooker. <laughs> <laughs> We have to talk about how what what it is. Go back and look and find out what we did. Okay. Financially, what now, did we do to get in that situation? Talk. Okay, we got to talk. Talk. Solve the problem. Yeah. Men love problem solving. They're very logical in their thinking. If there's a problem, the first thing you want to do is try to figure out how to fix it. That's why sometimes we come home, we're tired or we're crying or we're upset or something. And the first thing our husbands want to do is fix the problem. Well, this is what you should have done. This that we don't want that. What do we want him? He's learned already. What do I need? Run the tub of hot water and bitch. So get it. I don't have a tub now. Okay, take a shot shower or something. No, that's not what I need. I need yeah. a hug. Sometimes I just need a hug. Just a hug. Just a hug. Yeah, just a hug. yeah only a hug. Only yeah. a hug. Boring. <laughs> okay. But that's what we have to just, do. I just want need a hug to yeah. comfort me. And but husbands, spouses, your friend. He needs a logic. He needs you to sit down and talk with him. You talk know, to him you know, to figure out of, the problem. A couple of months ago, Sharon talked about how this boy touched her finger. And she went, oh, my God, he touched me. You know. So you're not supposed to do that with us? Hey. Hampton. No. <laughs> I was seven. I'm <laughs> seven anymore. Okay. It takes anyway, more than just touching my finger. We got to talk and worry about it. We, have to, we need we to gotta talk. We got to talk. We got to talk. And Bottom that's line. what you like go to get do. The, go get that scoop of ice cream, sit down and talk. Or go get that snowball and talk. That's How can it. we get this? That's it. Absolutely. Yeah, go, check the, go check the ashtray, see how many coins you got in there. Okay. <laughs> and go get yourself a snowball and talk. Exactly. How did we get in this situation? Oh, I see what happened. You paid that same credit card twice. Oh, okay. He had to say that, didn't you? Okay. okay. Anyway. It, when you are, are supportive of your husband, and he loves that, when you support him, um, think of what you can live with. If you are talking about something and you have a difference of opinion, try to think what, uh, see his side, discuss his side, ask questions. Sometimes it's just a matter that you don't really understand what he's saying. He's from Mars and you're from Venus. So sometimes you really got to dig into it and understand is the sky, is he saying the sky is really blue or is only blue in the daytime? It's really dark at night. So ask the question and see what he's talking about. And sometimes a solution and a compromise can be that you simply have to decide, you know, what he's saying is not that bad. I can live with that. And just you don't have to say all this part right here. But in your head, you've been thinking, I can live with that. Okay, baby, you go ahead and do that. Let, we can do that. And just let's see if it works. You know, don't be so rigid in the structure that you can't um, see things his way every now and then. Especially if it's nothing going against your conscience. Like when um, Hampton wasn't tithing and I wanted to. It went against my conscience to uh, to not tithe, and so I went ahead and I did it. And but I did, I never fussed at him for not doing it. I didn't belittle him for not doing it. I understood that we came from two different um, 
uh, upbringings in the church and that and sooner or later he came around to it and I didn't have to say anything I prayed about it and the Lord spoke to him in, in part of his heart that I didn't I was not able to get to I don't even think I knew how to do that um <clears throat> Being in a um, best friend relationship with your husband will require perseverance, patience, mm -hmm. understanding, and genuine love. Yes. yes. Even when you don't feel like it, even when you think he doesn't deserve it. You know, just think about that. Because a lot of uh, wives, especially at my age, are losing their spouse, their, their husbands, and they, they just wish they could take it back and, and, and do it right. You know, and I, I don't ever want to be in that position. I really don't. I, I want to get it right this this time. Um, one of the things you can do is to promise each other never to make a final decision on matters that affect you, you both or your family without agreeing on it. You need yeah. to come to a consensus. We learned that one, boy. We don't want to do that. We don't do anything unless we both agree. Mm -hmm. Nothing, okay? And if we don't agree, what do we do? We pray about it and do something else. Yes, sir. Don't do we, don't, we, don't we don't do anything. Do we don't do anything. Don't do it, yeah. That's it. And, you know, the Lord will speak to one or both of us and mm -hmm. come, come up with a decision or a workaround or something like that. Mm -hmm. It is so important because I am, I, <laughs> I've done stuff on my own and I lived it. Now, see, you're not supposed to do that. What? Well, I'm listening. <laughs> <laughs> okay. But anyway, as I was saying, I have done stuff and did not consult Hampton and because I went, I, I knew what he would say if I asked him about it. And I didn't want to hear what he had to say because I was determined to do what I wanted to do. She bit the apple. Oh, I sure did, didn't I? Yes. <laughs> okay. I bit the apple. Okay. Um... Teach your husband how to comfort you and learn how he likes to be comforted. The, um, like I said, with Hampton, he likes to, to talk over solutions. So if there's a problem, if there's something that's happened, he likes he likes it if I sit down and, and talk about it and discuss it with him. He likes that. A hug is not going to get it for him. If he comes home and his boss has been beating him up and, and chastising him. He does not want a hug. He just wants he wants a, a ear to listen to what he has to say. And uh, if I have some advice for him, he'll take it. Gladly take that because it helps solve the problem. But he doesn't want a hug. Me, I come home and my boss has been derating me and chastising me, whatever. I'm coming home. I know, honey. Um, that never happened on my job. I find a new job. I transferred out. I'm gone. I'm out of Well, here, you could man. do that. I couldn't do that. Mm -hmm. I wasn't able to do anything like that. I, I've had um, principals who did do that, and I was stuck, you know. So, um, but you, I come home, and yes, he would have the, the bath ready for me because we, we normally talked every day from um, on my planning period. So he kind of knew what kind of mood I was in when I came home. After sitting in the car for an hour, he could kind of tell it wasn't going to be a good day for me. I would come in the house and he'd have a hot tub of water running. Dinner I had a TV done. in there. He had dinner done. Kids were fed. He was doing homework with, with the kids and all I needed to do was just soak in the tub. Oh man, I missed my tub. Mm -hmm. You get a motor home with the tub next time? No. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, another thing is that um, uh, when, uh, when our husbands do something, we shouldn't chastise them. I, and we can use that example I use that example because Hampton doesn't chastise me very often, hardly any now. But when we're first married, of course, we're still learning each other like that. But there were times when um, I called Hamp, I had um, uh, run in a ditch. He would. <laughs> I got to come with a truck and a chain. <laughs> and this was regular. I, I can't count the times that he came with a chain. Oh, because she saw a plant that she wanted. Oh, look at that plant over there in the ditch. <laughs> Because you tend to drive where you're looking. I was in the ditch on 424. No, 450 going towards Annapolis. I'd be in the ditch getting, I want to dig up ferns off the side anyway. And he would come pull me out. He never fussed at me for that. They uh, ran out of gas one time on the Baltimore Washington Parkway with the kids in the car. He came with some gas. And I don't remember how you found out I was down there because there was no such thing as cell phones cell then. Phones like that. I don't know how you found out. I, I don't. You, I don't think. I know what I did. It's what you know what I did. I walked to that little. Uh, it was right there at the farm 
uh, at Springfield Road. And what I did was I walked over to that little maintenance building over there and oh, I called oh, you. That's oh, how I found okay. out. Yeah, I called okay. from there. Yeah, because we didn't have cell phones back then. And then another time um, I got stopped by the police in uh, Laurel and oh, for, yeah. for riding down the middle of the, of the highway. Anticipated <clears throat> turn or something like that. The well, actually, the truth was it was real late at night. And I just wanted to feel like, you know, what it feels like riding down the center of the highway. I didn't know the police was behind. Anyone county police right yeah, behind. And, and, Are you drunk? And, and he thought I was drunk. <laughs> <laughs> and so when he stopped me, all I could think about, and I evidently I had just gotten another ticket or something. And like I said, we ain't had no money. And I said, oh no, how am I gonna pay for this? We don't have no money. Oh man. And I had the dog with me, bless her heart. And I and I'm in the car. I was Layla just crying. To eat the police <laughs> I was just crying and carrying on. And uh, he didn't want me. To, the policeman didn't want to, want me to drive, but I was really crying because I was hoping he wasn't gonna give me no ticket. He still gave me a pick, ticket. Oh well. Anyway. Anyhow, but Hamp came to get me, drove his car down to comfort me, and you're so sweet. Yes, that was a long time ago too. Um. Always be open to his ideas and opinions. Listen to him. Sometimes you know they have some good ones in there. You know. The, the whole idea, I'm, I'm sorry, baby. The whole idea may not be good, but if you listen carefully, asking questions, you may be able to find a real gold nugget in the middle of an idea. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yep. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Did I dress that up real good? I am your gold nugget, baby. You can hang in there. <laughs> okay. All right. Okay, I got you. Okay. I got you. Um, don't lecture him. Don't lecture him. No, that, that doesn't no really it doesn't solve his problems. Um, just find a way to help him. Uh, even when you're in the midst of helping him solve the problems, don't give him a lecture. Why in the world would you do that? You shouldn't have done that. If you had paid attention, but you, you know, you don't do that. that. That demeans them. You don't want to do that. So you want to make sure that you uh, offer constructive criticism gently, not, you know, enthusiastically don't don't put any malice in there like that um you want to add spice to your romance remember all the spice you added when you were dating mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. get some of that yes spray spray some bathroom polo on yourself guys <laughs> every now and then okay. yeah you know um in, in, initiate you know he likes biscuits Instead of him asking you for biscuits, <laughs> offer to make him some biscuits. Yeah, or some chocolate chip cookies, you know. And you you know how he likes his cookies. Sometimes he likes them just hot out the oven. Sometimes he likes them with an ice cold glass of milk. You know how he likes his biscuits. You know how he likes his cookies. So, you know, you be the one to make him some cookies and surprise him, you know. Bring us some cookies or some red high heel shoes. <laughs> My baby did that one Valentine's Day. Yeah, they, they know already. Yeah, you know, you're talking about that one. Yeah, they already <laughs> they know that one about it. And um, take him out to his favorite restaurant or cook him his favorite meal with dessert or dessert. Yes. Um, don't have. Okay, close your ears, honey. I know you, this is gently. And then I'm going to say this and then we're going to be done. Do not have selfish sex. In other words, you know, after all these years y'all been together, this is grown folks talk, how he likes it. Give it to him like that every now and then. You know that. Look at him blushing. Let me see your fingernails. Oh, he's blushing. <laughs> Like that every now and then, you know. Don't oh, don't be like a cold fish, you know. You got to remember now. There is somebody who would love your boring husband. You know that. Come on now. And there's a hussy out there waiting for him. So why not be I'll his be hubby? You. There you go. Ding, 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 I'll be ding, your hussy. Thank you very much. Yes. Is the pastor on here? <laughs> yes. Yeah, okay, so anyway, I'm going to let y'all go on that one, okay? Mm-hmm. That's something like, because they got to have time to go home and go back and be make there. Some cookies. And make some cookies and be his hussy. That's mm-hmm. right. Absolutely. Amen. Thank you. Thank you for the church lady. Okay, next week, we're going to be talking about. Now, I got to read that all that book before we get on here next week. Keeping your wife your best friend. Yes. 
Yes. Mm-hmm. Okay. All right. Well, that's it for tonight, guys. You don't have a good evening, okay? See you next week. Take care. Love Thank you, you all. for coming and spending some time with us so we can be here by ourselves talking you to the screen. Yes. Yes. I we wish you, you could see yourself Bye-bye. Just sitting there on my chair I'm staring at you You don't even notice Should have told you straight away You don't have to be afraid